Go ahead and return to your seats, and we will read and pray over our psalm of the week. I will not go 11 minutes this time. Okay. So please join me in Psalm chapter se- well, Psalm 78, and we will finish it starting in verse 40. Psalm 78, verse 40. How often they, the people of Israel, rebelled against him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. They tested God again and again and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power or the day when he redeemed them from the foe, when he performed his signs in Egypt and his marvels in the fields of Zoan. He turned their rivers to blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent among them swarms of flies which devoured them and frogs which destroyed them. He gave their crops to the destroying locust and the fruit of their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamores with frost. He gave over their cattle to the hail and their flocks to the thunderbolts. He let loose on them his burning anger, wrath, indignation, and distress a company of destroying angels. He made a path for his anger. He did not spare them from death, but gave their lives over to the plague. He struck down every firstborn in Egypt and the first fruits of their strength in the tents of Ham. He let, uh, then he led out his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them in safety so that they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to his holy land, to the mountain which, is his right, which his right hand had won. He drove out nations before them. He apportioned them for a possession and settled the tribes of Israel in their tents. Yet they tested and rebelled against the Most High God and did not keep his testimonies, but turned away and act, acted treacherously like their fathers. They twisted like a deceitful bow. For they provoked him to anger with their high places. They moved him to jealousy with their idols. When God heard, he was full of wrath, and he utterly rejected Israel. He forsook his dwelling at Shiloh, the tent where he dwelt among mankind, and delivered his power to captivity, his glory to the hand of the foe. He gave his people over to the sword and vented his wrath on his heritage." Fire devoured their young men, and their young women had no marriage song. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke as from a sleep, like a strong man shouting because of wine, and he put his adversaries to rout. He put them to everlasting shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah. Mount Zion, which he loves, he built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth, which he has founded forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the nursing ewes he brought him, to shepherd Jacob, his people, Israel, his inheritance. With upright heart, he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. Now let's pray. Lord, We ought to walk away from this psalm thinking something like, I can't believe those stupid Israelites. How could they do such a thing? How could they witness all of the miracles and the wondrous things that God did for them and yet turn away and and go after other gods? Lord, we see in this psalm that sin is stupid. Sin doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to turn away from a loving God who has been so faithful. It's irrational to reject and to run from a God who has proved himself over and over again. But Lord, please do not give us over to a a rash and a foolish sense of pride, for we are capable of committing these very same errors, yet even greater We have a greater revelation than they did. You have delivered us in a greater exodus, one from sin, which you accomplished in Jerusalem, on the cross, and in your resurrection. You've sent us a greater David, the good shepherd, 
Jesus is the good shepherd, the good king who laid down his life for his sheep. Lord, so since Jesus is greater than all these things, so our condemnation and judgment will be even greater than the one sent upon the Egyptians and the Israelites if we do not walk in repentance and faith. And Lord, we pray for our nation this morning. Lord, if you didn't if you didn't spare your own people, the nation of Israel from judgment, you certainly will not spare our nation. You've made no covenant with the United States. Your covenant is with your church. Lord, our nation is very very wicked. You are within your rights to judge our nation as you did Egypt. Lord, our wickedness has increased greatly over the last 21 years, and you are liable to send a judgment even more severe than the one you sent 21 years ago today if we do not repent. Lord, every hour our nation does not repent, we roll the dice. How long, O Lord, before you send the plagues of Egypt upon our nation? Lord, please grant to our people and to our leaders repentance. You said that the king's heart is a stream of water in your hand and you turn it wherever you will. You are sovereign, absolutely. Lord, if this can be said of the hearts of kings, surely it is to be said of the hearts of presidents. Father, please bring our president to repentance. Lord, almost almost every aspect of his policy and agenda is contrary to true righteousness, defined in your word, not by our lofty political pundits or opinions, but held against the standard of your word, he's a wicked man. Lord, please bring him to true repentance. Please give him eyes to see and ears to hear. Please do only what you can by the miracle of regeneration. Lord, please change his heart and cause him to walk in uprightness before you. Lord, we also pray this morning for the country of Cuba. We pray for the Cuban Christians who are meeting this morning in illegal house churches. Lord, please give them grace to persevere, although they are ostracized and maligned. Lord, would you please send them more helpers, more missionaries, more Bibles, so that the people of Cuba would learn the good news of the gospel of our conquering King Jesus. Lord, please bring them to salvation. And finally, Father, we pray now for our church. Lord, we pray for the testimony and the witness of our church. Help us to be bold and frequent evangelists in our town. Please cause the gospel to always be upon our lips as we speak to others. Father, we ask your blessing on the remainder of our service this morning. We ask that you would please speak through Danny today. May he faithfully fulfill the charge to preach the word in and out of season. May he boldly proclaim your truth accurately, even if it's something that we don't want to hear. Father, may we be corrected, rebuked, and encouraged through your holy scriptures this morning. And now, Lord, above all, may to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen.